decided uh, to do a bit of vlogging to share my day on the boat. But again, it's quite hard to vlog on a boat. I don't know how all those sailing people do it because it's quite difficult to try and get any footage. Good morning. Um, today I want to take you through a day on a chartered sailing boat to get the opportunity to head out to the middle of the Coral Sea and explore some of the most distant atolls um, on the edge of Australian waters. So yeah, here is a day on this boat. Today we're doing a lot of sailing, I think about nine, hour, nine hours of sailing. Um, so yeah, welcome to um, sailing life. So once I got my um, sun, sun shirt on, I'm gonna just go into the little ensuite toilets here. Ooh. Very cute little area. Yeah, um, and brush my teeth so I feel a bit like a human. It's about day five at sea, so the room's a little bit messy, but basically, there is a double bed, lots of storage space on the side for books, um, a window up here, a little fan there. And an ensuite with a fresh water shower and tap, and then a sea toilet. So the toilets are really neat because you see water, so you can flush it as much as you want. You basically press this button. You do have to be very careful to flush for long enough so it doesn't block up the pipes because they can only be cleaned at the marinas, um, cleared at the marinas. So yeah, I'm gonna close this off, turn off the lights, and head on upstairs. Probably not gonna have any breakfast because I'll be seasick. <laughs> breakfast of peanut butter. And So unlike Diamond Atoll, which allows fishing and spearfishing, Lihu Reef doesn't allow any sort of activity. So we were just free diving and diving and um, no one was fishing, so it was a bit of a different environment. Finally at Lihu Reef, just a few hours from the island.
a green zone, so unlike Diamond Atoll, there's no fishing or spearfishing allowed. We spent the days free diving and scuba diving around the various spots that we stopped. We stopped at about six or seven spots and we tried to always go onto the land and collect some of the trash as well as just check out the biodiversity in the area. I actually talked to my friend Pablo, which you guys may know from a podcast I did with him a little while ago. He works for Reef Restoration Foundation and sometimes for Parlay Australia. So I asked him to um, give me any way I can collect data for scientists wanting to learn more about the reef. Since this area is so isolated and not many people visit it, I thought that any sort of data I could gather could be beneficial. So I gathered photos specifically for Eye on the Reef, where I took photos of various sections of the reef, as well as the GPS coordinates to be able to send them back. Now they wanted about 10 photos of any reef, so I tried to be unbiased in what I was taking photos of. So I would take a photo and then swim forward in a straight line, 10 kicks, and then take another photo, so on and so forth. So I wasn't focusing on the really unhealthy parts of the reef or the super healthy parts of the reef. What I did find in this very isolated destinations is that the reef wasn't actually as healthy and the fish biodiversity wasn't as large as I would have expected. West coast of Australia where I see manta rays or rays or sharks on every single dive and turtles, we saw very little biodiversity out here. We saw sharks on almost every dive. We saw a couple of these Napoleon Maori wrasses and apart from that we saw a lot of small reef fish in terms of trout or cod or other specialized target species. We only saw a couple on every dive, and in terms of any megafauna, we didn't see any, and I found that quite surprising. So the sharks definitely did like following us around and uh, checking out what we were doing. Thank <laughs> you. 